Okay, today's tutorial is going to be on making glowing objects. So any scene, any object that you want emitting light within your scene. There's going to be about three steps to it, and I like combining them together to, to get all the results here. So there's going to be um, step one, I'm going to be adding a shader to this object right here that I want to have emitting light. I'm going to then create a light emitter to kind of go with it. So that'll be step two, and then step three will be adding atmosphere into the scene so that it looks less computerized. Having atmosphere in the scene, the, the light will be kind of hitting some, you know, um, air particles out here, and it'll kind of look more natural once we add that in here. So to start things off, I have a real simple scene. I just created a plane. I have these three platonic sob objects here. Notice here in the outliner to the left that I've named everything here. Um, and I have this object right here, which I've called the light object. This is the one that I'm going to have illuminating, illuminating things. I have no lights in the scene, so if I were to render this right now, it would be pitch black. So to start this off, I'm going to add uh, do step one, which is adding the shader to this. So I'm going to go to the hypershade, which is this button right here. And I'm going to add a new Arnold standard AI standard surface here, so be sure not to add a Maya shader here. It's really important that you add an Arnold shader, and then go down to AI standard surface right here, and I'm going to just go ahead and rename this. I'm going to right click, go down to rename right up here, and call it light. So this is our shader right there, and I'm going to have this be like a bright fuchsia here. So I'll go ahead and change the base color and I'm going to have a, a very saturated color here. And additionally, more, and more importantly here, I'm going to go down to the um, pass transmission, down to emission right here. It's going to emit light. So this is going to be the color in which it emits light, and then this is going to be the amount. The weight is the amount that it emits light. So I'm just going to click on color and bring it up to a similar color as I had for the base. And I'm just going to go ahead and pump this up to like 0.7 or so. And so now I need to assign this to the object. And so this is my light object right here. So I'm going to select it in object mode. Then in the hypershade right here on the light material, I'm going to right click and then assign material to selection. And I'll minimize this. Let's go ahead and just do a render, see where we are on this. So we have a render here, and you can see that the object's beginning to emit light right there. So that's kind of step one, but um, if I were to try to do this all with this step, you see how it has that really hard edge going around it that looks really kind of computerized? Um, that's not really ideal, I don't think. And so what I'm going to do here is move on to step two, and there might be a little bit of a back and forth between um, step one and step two here as I fine tune it and get it looking as good as possible here. So for step two, what I need to do is take the light object and I'm just going to press Command and D to duplicate it right there. So I have light object and then I have light object one, which is the duplicate. And I'll call this light object emitter here. And so what I'm going to do is make sure it's selected. And I'm going to go up to Arnold lights and then oops Arnold lights and then mesh light and what mesh light does is it takes whatever object that you have currently selected and it turns that into a light emitter so I'll do mesh light and you see it made, it made a group out of it so let me just go ahead and I'm gonna hide by just pressing H so right here with the initial light object I'm just hiding it so here you can see we have the light emitter here and I can click on the group and if I open the group by pressing the plus button, I can click on the emitter here. And here I get the attribute editor to, to um, change the settings of it. So if I go ahead and render, having not changed any of the settings, let me just see where we are on this. You can see we're getting nothing here. And the reason for that is I need to boost the intensity a lot here. So let's try 10, see what we get. Okay, so this is starting to emit some light, but it's a white light. And so I'm going to change the color to match the color of our object here. So you can kind of see why I'm doing both steps, right? I have 
um, the emitter and then I have the shader that that's emitting some light but if I were to in step one um, have the shader emitting an, all of the light it would just blow out and turn into this white geometric object that looks kind of weird here remember here so um, sorry for the digression there so remember here we're under the light object emitter right where I went to Arnold lights and I made a mesh light right there so we're under that properties editor and if I drag the intensity up, it maxes out at 10, but I can just go in here and I can type in any number I want. So I can have it emitting up to, you know, any old number I want here. So I'm going to punch it up to 120 here. And that's a little more of the speed I want. I might even go further and take it up to 175 or so. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the visibility of the original object. And so we can kind of start to see that now. And we're going to try to do a balancing X between these. Additionally, something else I want to do is I'm going to select the light object emitter. And then I'm going to hold command on my keyboard and then select the light object to select them both. And then I'll press command and G. And so now we have one big group for everything here. And so for a minute here, I just need to fine tune some of this. So with the light object, I might select that again, click on my hypershade, and select this. And maybe I can play with bringing the intensity of the, uh, the emitter on that on too. And I'm trying to kind of find a balance between these two. I could also experiment with adding like subsurface to this to have it so that it's kind of showing through the object a little bit, or even playing with transmission a little bit. Um, to get some different kind of parameters on this thing, but I'm not going to dive too much into that right now. Just remember you can kind of change the properties of this, this object further. It, it, you, you don't have to stop simply at emission, emission there. So um, that's step one and two, but you can see, still see here we have this really geometric hard line right there that doesn't look very naturalistic. Looks very computerized right there. And so what I need to do now is I need to add some atmosphere into the scene. So step three is kind of adding some atmosphere into the environment so that the light can kind of catch that, catch the atmosphere on the edges and have a more realistic look. So there's a few ways to add atmosphere and I have another tutorial that goes deep into atmosphere here. If you um, look under the, um, uh, the playlist, but if we add atmosphere, we want to go to render settings, which is this button right here. We're going to go to the Arnold render and then go down to environment. So render settings, go to the Arnold render, go down to environment. And right here we have atmosphere and then we have this checkerboard right here. And if we click on the checkerboard, we have three options. Um, we're going to use AI atmosphere volume, so the first option for this lesson here. But the AI fog can be useful too. Um, if you want to learn more about the AI, if AI fog, check the other tutorial there. So I'm going to do create atmosphere volume. And you can see in the attribute editor, I'll just go ahead and close this out because all we're doing here is just under atmosphere, just turning it on by clicking on the checkerboard and choosing the first option. And not much has happened or not anything's happened. But you can see, see here that I have the AI atmosphere volume in my attribute editor. And if you ever click off of the object, or off and you lose the volume, where you find it again is if you open up the hypershade. And if you look under materials, the atmosphere is a material right here, so it'll show up right there. And generally speaking, there's not too many controls that I like to mess with on this. I essentially kind of mess with the density and then the attenuation. The color, I tend to like the fog color to be white, and if there's any color I want to introduce into it, I'll do that through the lights themselves. So let's give this fog a little bit of density. I'm just going to do um, 0 0.5, and you can already see that this thing's changed a lot right here. So um, I've just taken the density of the fog and moved it to 0 0.5. I can do something a lot less extreme here. So attenuation, right here is the fall off of the fog. So if I bring the attenuation up, you can see the fall off, it kind of like, um, it gets harder for the light to tra travel through the fog a little bit. And so just balancing these two controls is 
really the name of the game here. And so this is basically how you do it here. Um, and if you look here, I'm going to keep my renderer open to the right and have my group selected in my outliner right here. And if I press W, you can see here the center pivot is off basis there. So if you want to bring the center pivot back into the center of the object, just go to modify and then center pivot right there. And it's back where it should be. And so you can see here as I move the object around in the scene that it is lighting the scene differently here. And if you want to continue to make adjustments to the way that this looks here, just remember you have the three areas of control here. So I have the, um, first I have the material shader that I have on the object right there. So I could choose to um, go back to here and under the emission, I could bring this up to like two or three. Remember, so it maxes out at one, but remember you can always just type in your own number there usually in Maya. And so I can have this kind of starting to emit more light from the object itself and kind of get more control that way. Additionally, I can add like subsurface scattering and stuff like that if I want this object to have the appearance of having some uh, um, plastic or glass wrapped around a light emitting source within the, the object itself. So there's a lot you can kind of do in this section here. Additionally, I can, I'll close out the hypershade here. Additionally, I can go back to my light group here and I can click on my light emitter that I created. Remember when I duplicated the object and then I went to um, Arnold lights and mesh light. So that was step two. And so we can click on that light right there in the outliner and bring up the property editors for that. And I could have that starting to emit more or less light right there just by changing the intensity. Um, on top of the intensity, so the intensity is obviously the intensity of the light. The exposure kind of adds like more of a broad broadness to the area that it's lighting right there. So keep in mind that you can also kind of mess with the exposure of the light too to kind of change some of the characteristics. Typically, I kind of leave it pretty subtle when I'm messing with the exposure, and I'm generally mainly changing the intensity and the color of um, the object right there. And then finally, um, you can change the atmosphere here. So this has got the scene right here, even though I typed in a low number, has a pretty large amount of atmosphere in it, and I'm kind of doing that because I kind of like the stylized effect that it has. But remember, you can adjust that by, again, opening the hypershade right here. Give it a minute to open. Clicking on the under materials, the AI atmosphere. And right now the density is at 0 0.02, so a very small number. Let's try 0 0.01. I'm punching that in. And remember, we can also change the density, but as well, we can kind of mess with the attenuation here. So if I bring the attenuation up, that can. change some of the way that this light is behaving here. And so those are the techniques I use to um, have an object kind of emit light within a scene here.